Hi, I'm Mr. Long, and we're looking at the second question in a little Delphi test that's giving us just the basics into Delphi. The first question was on handling syntax errors. In this question, we're going to be looking at components and changing properties at runtime. In other words, when the program is actually running. So there's a few things you want to do. There's a, a component of it or a, a form that has lots of components on. There's a shape called the SHP ball. There's a panel. There's a couple of buttons that we can see. There's an edit box. And there's another button over there. So let's look at the first question. The first question says we must write code for the BTN change color button when we double click on it. That changes both the brush and the pen properties of the shape ball or the shape SHP ball. And the colors must be different. That's the one thing. And the other thing is that the button that we've just clicked on must be disabled. So let's go look at our form there. You can see our form with our, there's our SHP ball and there's our button. So there's the button that we must work in. I'm going to double click on the button to get to the area where we can write the code for this. So the first part was we had to change the brush and the pen of SHP ball. So we first say SHP ball. That's the component that we want to change. Then we put a dot followed by which property we want to change. And the first one I want to change is the brush. Now the brush has multiple properties like style and color. We want to change the color and they say we can change it to any color we want. So I'm going to make it CL blue. Let's see how that works. Then it said we must also change the pen prop property. So SHP ball, I call the shape again. Now I call its pen property and let's see if the color pops up. There we go. Notice the American spelling. There's no U in color. And we must change it to a, another color as long as it's different to the, the brush that we just selected. So I can't use blue now. So I'm going to make CL. It's already yellow at the moment. So maybe the pen color we can make. What would be a good color? Let's make it white. Let's see if that works. And then the last instruction that was given to us is that the button, BTN change color, there it is must be disabled. Now if I say dot disabled, I get a whole bunch of things here. Those things don't look correct. Um, but I remember when I did visible, I remember there wasn't an invisible property, but we made the visible true or false. So if I want to make it disabled, maybe there's an enabled property. So let's try, ah, there's enabled, and that's a boolean, which means it's true or false. So we want to make it disabled. So I'm assuming that enabled must be false. And so those are the, the things we must do for this button. Let's test it. I'm going to run the program. So we are expecting two things, or a few things to happen. First of all, that yellow shape must change to a different color, and the black line around it should change to a different color. And then this button must change in such a way that it goes, it becomes grayed out, so that we can't click on it anymore. So let's try it. So there you can see a blue ball with a white border. And you notice how the button is different to all the others. It's grayed out, which means we can't actually click on it anymore. Okay, that's great. So that's the first one done. Let's go to the next question, 2.2. We must write code for the random location button, which changes the ball's top and left property to a random number. The top between 0 and 160 and the left between 0 and 400. And it must be a different location each time. So we can't just specify a red, uh, we can't make our own random number. We've got to make the program make a random number. So let's go to the button. That's the random location button. I'm going to double click on that. So we want to change the properties of the ball again. So SHP ball dot top. Now let's just remind ourselves because I need a reminder. The top property is random from 0 to 160. Now, I know in Delphi, I want to change its value to some sort of integer. I know in Delphi there's a random function which takes in a number. So if I, for example, gave the number 6, it would create a random number from 0 to 5. So if I want to go from 0 to 160, that means I must go not to 160, because that's going to be a random number from 0 to 159. I'm going to make it from 0 to 161. Or, or I'm going to set this number to 161 so that it generates a random number from 0 to 160. So this should be a number from 0 to 160. And then at the same time, we're going to say SHP ball. We're going to change the left property 
to be some sort of random number between 0 and 400. So I'm going to apply the exact same logic that I did in the first question. I'm not going to make it 400 because then it's going to generate a random number from 0 to 399. I'm going to make it to 401. That means it'll go from 0 to 400. Okay. So let's test it. Are we going to do a little variation of that? If it works, let's just test random locations. You see how it's moving around the screen. It's going to all different parts so we know that it works. Um, you could have also done the following. I'm just going to do it at the bottom here. You could have also said shpball.top is equal to random range from 0 to 160. Now, random range allows you to specify the, the upper and lower limits of your random number. But you'll notice here that random range is in red, which means it's not recognized. And that's because we must go to the top. If you're going to use the random range option instead of random, then you must apply the math library at the top. So if you did it this way, that's fine. But just remember to add math at the top. It is, you can be a little bit more specific with your code, but just make sure you add math at the top. Okay, that's one, 2.2. Now 2.3, write code for the double size button that must double both the width and the height property. So double means if it was 4, it must become 8. If it was 100, it must become 200. It must continuously double, which means we times it by 2. So if we go to our form, there's the double size button. Double click on it, and we're going to say the shape ball dot height is equal. Now we can't just say times 2 because it's going to say times 2 to what? So we want to take the current value. Now I'm not going to say height like that because it's going to think that height is a variable. We don't have a variable. We want to get the shape's height because we also need to specify which component. We've got lots of components with heights. So we want to say get the actual shape's height that we are currently using, take it and multiply it by 2 and make that the new height. So whatever the height was, Take its value, multiply by 2. So if it was 100, multiply by 2, it will become 200, and that becomes the new height. And we will do the exact same thing with the width, not the SHP width. SH ball dot width is going to be whatever the ball's current width is, multiplied by 2. Let's run that and see how we go with that one. Okay, double size. Yep, it looks like it's getting bigger. Now it's off the screen. Fantastic. Now, the last question. Where is our question paper? There we go. As our question paper. 2.4. Uh, write code for the move right button, which uses the left property. So there's no right property for a ball. It's just a left property. So that the shape moves to the right by the value given as input. So whatever the value is, it must move that many pixels or blocks to the right okay so just to put in perspective if we use the right value if you look at the ball at the moment if we go check out it's right well there is no right value it's a left value so there's left it's 168 if i move it to the right i want you to notice here on the left how it, the number got bigger so when we move into the right we are changing the left property to become a bigger number so if we want to move it by a value that's there we want to move by 15 we want to take whatever is the current left value and add 15 onto it we don't want to change it to that value because if the ball is here at 224 and we just change it to 15 it's going to move somewhere over here um, which is not moving to the right that's going back to the beginning so on this move right button, we're going to say, okay, first of all, we need to get the value that's in that edit box. And I like to store them in variables. So I'm going to make a number variable. It's an integer. So let's have an integer. And I'm going to say our number is going to be whatever's in the edit box called edit input. And the property of the edit box that we can get what it's typed in. And that was the text property. Oh, there's my number's got a couple of you. It doesn't really make a difference. It's just aesthetically pleasing if I do it this way. Okay, now this is also a problem because this is a string variable and we're trying to store a string into an integer, which we can do only if we convert it from a string to an integer. So there we go. So now we've stored whatever they typed in that little edit box is now stored in a variable called our number. So now I can take the ball's 
left property, take whatever the left property is at the moment, and add on our number. If I wanted to move it to the left, I would have minus that number. But because we want the left value to get bigger, in other words, move it to the right, we add on that number. I also don't make the left property just equal to that number because that's not moving it. That's just changing it to a particular position. So let's run it and see if it works. So if I click on it, do you see how it's moved to the right? If I click on it again, it keeps moving to the right, that small distance. If I make it a bigger value, it will move a bigger amount to the right. So double check, change the color works, random location works, double the size works, and move to the right works. So there we have all the questions done. We should be able to get all 11 marks.